first thing that we're going to do in this encoding process is to assign each letter uh, in our uh, statement that we're trying to encode, in our message that we're trying to encode, uh, to a numeric value. Uh, we're just going to use a very basic code uh, to do this. Uh, a is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, etc. All the way up to Z being 26 uh, for the letters of the alphabet, uh, each being assigned to the numbers 1 through 26. Uh, and 0 being used to represent any spaces if you have multiple words in your message that you're trying to encode. Uh, now, that wouldn't be a very difficult code to crack, so that's why we're going to use matrices to encode this and make it into a seemingly random string of numbers. So the first thing we're going to do here is go ahead, go ahead and assign a numeric value uh, based off that key that I just explained to each uh, of these letters. And that would be G would be 7, O would be 15, the space would be 0, uh, J would be 10, a would be 1, C would be 3, K would be 11, E would be 5, the T would be 20, and the S would be 19. So here I have this message uh, arranged as a set of numeric values, which you know might look like, what in the world does that say, but it's not a, that's not a very sophisticated code. Uh, anyone might be able to you know, figure out and try to assign. If they see only letters one through twenty-six appear, or numbers one through twenty-six appearing, they might be able to try uh, to just assign a letter of the alphabet to each of those numbers, and then be able to figure out your message pretty easily. We don't want it to be that simple. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use a uh, matrix multiplication to encode this message to get a, a much higher level of encryption here, so that it's not like one to one matched up just with. Uh, you know, the, the letters of the alphabet to their corresponding number, things like that. So that's step one, uh, converting your message into a string of numeric values. Now we have to choose a coding matrix. Uh, to decode this message, they have to be able to find, somebody has to be able to find the inverse of the matrix that you used uh, to encode the message. Um, since the matrix is going to have an inverse like that, we're talking about square matrices. So in theory, you can use any uh, dimension square matrix here, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4, etc. I uh, like that. The more rows and columns it has, the, the harder it will be to find the inverse and therefore decode your message. Um, we're going to work in this lesson with uh, either using 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrices. Uh, you saw in one of my other videos how difficult it is to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix by hand. Um, so I'm going to work with 2 by 2s on this example just so I can show you the process. Um, when we get to a project part of this, you can choose to use a 3 by 3 if you wish. Uh, but you won't be required to do anything more complex than using a 2x2 two two matrix to encode your message. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and choose a coding matrix. I'm just going to make up a 2x2 two two matrix. I'm going to be really original here. Um, I'm going to use the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is my matrix I'm going to choose to use to encode my message. Now that I've converted the message into a string of numeric values corresponding to their letter of the alphabet and that I've selected a coding matrix, I need to take that string of numbers that I have and arrange it into an appropriate uh, amount of rows so that it could be multiplied by this matrix. Uh, so if this matrix has two columns in it, uh, the matrix where I arrange that data must have two rows. So I need to have a 2 by 5 matrix to be able to um, encode this message. My, my message, my string of numbers that I had uh, from the letters and the, uh, the words go jackets and including the space had 10 things in it. Uh, so I'm going to need to use uh, two rows of five to be able to fit that in there. So if I go ahead and start filling in those values, I had the seven and then the 15. Make that look more like a 15. And then the zero the 10 and the 1, and then I had 3, 11, 5, 20, and 19 for that. So again, that's just my string of numbers that I had uh, a second ago uh, broken into two rows. If you're using a 2 by 2 matrix to encode your message, you need to have two rows over here uh, with that. If you start filling in your first row and then your second row and you don't quite have enough uh, numbers, you might have to put an extra zero in there. Like if you had an odd number of entries uh, or an odd number of numbers and you needed to have two rows, um, 
you're going to have an extra thing here at the end. You can't just leave it blank, uh, so you might have to put a zero in that last spot. As it turns out, I had 10 uh, numbers in my string of code, so I could split it up as 5 and 5. But if I had 11, then I would have had to go, I couldn't go 6 and 5. I would have to go 6, fill in the 5, and then put an extra zero in that last spot. Uh, similarly, if you're using a 3x3 three three matrix to encode your message, uh, you would have to have three rows over here, uh, and you'd break your string of code up into three rows as best you can and put any extra zeros at the end if you need to uh, with that. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, now we need to go ahead and actually just perform a bunch of uh, matrix multiplication. We've already talked about how to do matrix multiplication in another example. Uh, so we need to go ahead and cycle through the matrix multiplication here and figure out uh, what our product is down here. So again, to do matrix multiplication, I take the first row times the first column. That will fill in this first entry right here. So I do 1 times 7, which is 7, 2 times 3, which is 6, and then I add those together. 7 and 6 makes 13 for my first entry there. And then first row, second column, 1 times 15 is 15, 2 times 11 is 22, 15 and 22 makes 37. First row, third column, 1 times 0 is 0, 2 times 5 is 10, add those together, I get 10. First row, fourth column, 1 times 10 is 10, 2 times 20 is 40, uh, 40 and 10 makes 50. And then finally, first row, last column, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 19 is 38, 38 and 1 makes 39. So I've done the matrix multiplication to fill in my first row. Now I go to second row with each of the columns to fill in this bottom row of my product. So 3 times 7 is 21. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. 21 and 12 makes 33. 3 times 15 is 45, 4 times 11 is 44, 45 and 44 makes 89. 3 times 0 is 0, 4 times 5 is 20, 0 and 20 makes 20. 3 times 10 makes 30, 4 times 20 makes 80, 30 and 80 is 110. And then finally, 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 times 19 is uh, 76. Okay, so I have 3 and 76, which makes 79. Uh, at this point in time, I have encoded the message, so I have this string of numbers, 13, 37, 10, 50, 39, 33, 89, 20, 110 and 79. Now, if I look at that series of numbers, I don't see only numbers like 1 through 26 showing up. There's no way I'm going to be able to just say, oh, well, 1 must be A, 2 must be B, 3 must be C, and so on. That looks like a seemingly random string of numbers. Um, let's see, I don't think I had any repeated letters in there. Uh, but you would, if I did have some repeated letters in there, like you would see that like an A in one place would be represented by a different number than an A in another place because of the matrix multiplication. It's really cool, um, and it makes it almost impossible to look at that and be able to decipher what that message was uh, without knowing the matrix that was used to encode it and then being able to find the inverse of that matrix and use that to decode it. So here we have our encoded message um, with at least some level of security uh, with the, in the, encryption, with the uh, encryption there. So... That's how you encode a message using